Someone tweeted me a question earlier today. Is Musnid Ahmed 16,245 authentic? It's the one where Muhammad makes out with his young nephew. The Islamists are saying no, but they call everything they don't like a lie. And by any chance, do you know the age of the nephew when it happened? Musnid Ahmed 16,245 is certainly one of the hadiths found in Musnid Ahmed, but as far as I know, that volume of Musnid Ahmed hasn't been translated yet. I've been purchasing the Darus Salaam edition of Musnid Ahmed, and only three volumes have been published, so we'll have to wait for the complete collection. This particular hadith from the collection has been translated mainly because it's really, really creepy. The hadith reads, Muawiyah said, I saw the Prophet sucking on the tongue or the lips of Al-Hassan, son of Ali. May the prayers of Allah be upon him, for no tongue or lips that the Prophet sucked on will be tormented by hellfire. Hassan was Muhammad's grandson. Here we have Muhammad sucking on his grandson's tongue or lips, and Muhammad had somehow guaranteed that if he sucked on someone's tongue or lips, that person would be saved from hellfire. To be fair, this doesn't say that Muhammad was making out with his grandson. It says that he was sucking on his grandson's tongue or lips. But think about how creepy this is. Hey kid, let me suck on your tongue. If I suck on your tongue, you'll go to heaven. This is the same guy who ordered his followers to suck on his fingers so that they would get a blessing from Allah, and the same prophet who ordered grown women to let grown men suck on their breasts so that the men would no longer be sexually attracted to them because they would feel like their children. The prophet of Islam sure liked sucking, but since the relevant volume of Musnid Ahmed hasn't been translated yet, it's hard to show this hadith to Muslims. And if you simply claim that Muhammad sucked on the tongues of little boys, a Muslim will probably think that you're making it up. So it would be nice to be able to show your Muslim friends a hadith that's readily available. And fortunately, it turns out that we have a similar hadith in Al-Adab al-Mufrid, which is one of the collections of Bukhari and is available online. We read in Al-Adab al-Mufrid, number 1183, I'll put a link to this in the description box, it is related that Abu Huraira said, I never saw al Hassan without my eyes overflowing with tears. That is because the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, went out one day and I found him in the mosque. He took my hand and I went along with him. He did not speak to me until we reached the market of Banu Kainuka. He walked around it and looked. Then he left, and I left with him until we reached the mosque. He sat down and wrapped himself in his garment. Then he said, Where is the little one? Call the little one to me. Hassan came running and jumped into his lap. Then he put his hand in his beard. Then the Prophet, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, opened his mouth and put his tongue in his mouth. Then he said, O oh Allah, I love him. So love him and the one who loves him. So this isn't Muhammad sucking on Hassan's tongue. This is Muhammad sticking his tongue in Hassan's mouth so Hassan could suck on it. No wonder Abu Huraira would cry when he would think about this. Muslim apologists explain these hadiths in two main ways. First, some Muslim apologists claim that Muhammad's spit had miraculous properties and that by sticking his tongue in a boy's mouth, he was miraculously feeding him. Second, other Muslim apologists point out that Arabia has a very dry climate, and that by sticking his tongue in a boy's mouth, Muhammad was simply quenching the boy's thirst. Notice, however, that if Muhammad was quenching a boy's thirst by letting the boy suck on his tongue, the reverse was true in the hadith from Musnid Ahmed. Since Muhammad was sucking on the boy's tongue, Muhammad was quenching his own thirst by literally sucking the saliva from a little boy's mouth. Now, I hope we're all learning about the Prophet of Islam. For those of you who appreciate the fine arts, we reenacted Muhammad's teachings about sucking on people's tongues and sucking on people's 
fingers and breastfeeding adults in three installments of Islamicize Me. Enjoy the videos and be sure to share them with your Muslim friends who don't know any of this because their Imams always forget to tell them what their sources really say about the most obvious false prophet in history.